Hey, my name is Dairis. I am from Latvia. I am an integrated ADPL student and I've recently passed all my 14 EASA ADPL exams and I've decided to make some instructionary videos on how to tackle some of the trickier EASA questions from the current syllabus. Let's start it off with altimetry and true altitude calculations, which is one of the more actually important things to understand instead of the usual EASA important stuff. This will help you with three subjects, meteo, general navigation, and flight planning. So let's kick it off. So this is going to be our problem, which we'll be solving. We have to calculate our true altitude and also we have to calculate what will be the aircraft's clearance above, above the highest obstacle along this route. This is one of the, in my opinion, harder questions. And I think if you will get how to do this, you will be able to do any of those type of questions. So before I start, I would like to mention that there is no one, the most correct way on how to calculate these kind of problems. I'll just give you my way. It worked for me. And in my opinion, it's one of the easiest ones. You can use CRP5 or any other mechanical flight computer. I didn't think that the accuracy is good enough especially for indicated altitude and true altitude. For density altitude, sure, go ahead, not for true. That's my experience, so I'll explain you what is happening here. You draw a sketch, forget about the mountain, you don't have to include it here. Our aircraft is at flight level 150 or 15,000 feet, and that is measured from 1013 hectopascals, which is here. So the column effectively of 15,000 feet in ISA conditions is all this long thing, yeah? Our station is at 1,500 feet above mean sea level, and it measures that at the main sea level, the pressure is 1,000 hectopascals. So our zero feet or mean sea level is here, and this column is 1,500 feet. So not to confuse. Now we need to calculate how much is this column. And in order to do that, we have to take the difference between 1013 and 1000. Yep. So it is effectively 13. And one hectopascal difference equals 30 feet. And we just multiply 13 by 30, and we have uh, 300. 90 feet difference. So this portion is 390 feet. Now we have to think about our temperature correction. Biggest challenge or well, understanding here is that temperature correction is only done from the air column. Our station is at 1,500 feet. It's on a small mountain. This is Earth, and this is also Earth, so temperature deviation doesn't affect this. However, temperature correction affects this portion. We have to now calculate what is our ISA deviation. In this case, it is minus 25 degrees Celsius, and if the temperature is lower than ISA, then our indicated altitude increases. However, our true altitude decreases. Yeah, there are several ways on how to calculate uh, the temperature deviation. For me, what works is the following. So first, let's get the air column. And the air column is 15,000 feet minus 1,500 minus 390 feet, which equals 13,110 feet. So the whole column, yeah, 15,000 feet, we take off 1,500, which is here, and 390, which is here. So our air column here is 13110, but that is only true in ISA conditions, yeah? Let's adjust now this altitude for temperature. 
I do the following, I just remember it's times air column times 0 0.004 times ISA deviation. Yeah, and it is 1311 feet. Since we have a negative ISA deviation, our true altitude is lower. Therefore, we take off 1311 feet and we get the result that the air column actually, instead of 10110, is 11799. And that is this portion. Yeah. Then, since this is true altitude, it is measured from this datum, from zero feet true altitude. That's your actual altitude. Yeah. And the next calculation is 11799 feet plus 1500 feet. And that equals 13,299 feet. We disregard this small portion here because it is lower than uh, lower than zero feet. If our datum would be above, then we would be adding the small difference, but it's not. So we disregard it, and our true altitude measuring from zero feet is this plus this. Yeah. And now we can check on our question that uh, the mountain is at 8,000 feet. And now we just, uh, yeah, subtract 8,000 and it equals 5,299 feet. So do we have an answer of 5,300? Yes, we do. Perfect, that is correct. Um, let's go back this one question. Yeah, 5,300. And now, if we would have a positive ISA deviation, let's say of plus 25, all the calculation would remain exactly the same until this point here. If we would have a positive ISA deviation, our true altitude would be actually increasing. We would be adding in this position. And our true altitude, let me calculate it quickly then. 421 and 421 plus 1500 our true altitude would be 15921 yep that's it nothing more nothing less okay and now let's do a quick example of exactly the same uh, question however Let's imagine that the uh, mean sea level hectopascals are more uh, than the 1013. Yeah, just so you can understand better uh, with a little bit of variation. So the very beginning is exactly the same. So 1028 hectopascals minus 1013 equals um, so 15 times 30 equals 450 feet. Yeah. So what we did was the calculation of this section here. This is 450 feet. It's just the difference between our datum for flight level and the mean sea level. Yeah, this effectively leaves here only 1050 because this whole column is 1500. And now we again have to get our air column. Air column will be 15,000 feet minus uh, 1,050 and it equals 13,950 feet. So from here to here we have 15,000 feet and we need to now subtract only this portion. We don't care about this because it is lower and from this portion we are measuring the 15,000 feet. Yeah. So our air column is 13,950 feet. The calculation comes again exactly the same as before. Air column times 0 
times ISA deviation, which is 25. So ISA deviation minus 25 degrees Celsius. Yeah, it was minus 40 uh, degrees at flight level 150. And uh, that equals 1395 feet. As this is lower, uh, sorry, as the ISA deviation is negative, our true altitude is also lower. And our true altitude is then 13,950 minus 1,395. And that equals at 12,555 feet. So in ISA conditions, this portion would be 13195. However, with ISA deviation, this is not true. And our portion here is 12555 feet, right? And now we again, remember, true altitude is measured from here. Therefore, our true altitude will be 12,555 plus 1,500, and that equals at 14,055 feet. So this portion plus this portion until here, and also plus this portion. Now we add this small portion because datum for true altitude is here. So that is how you do it. If you have any questions, ask. If you have any comments, comment, like, dislike, whatever. I'm going to keep on going with some other small stuffs later on. Cheers.